Hey, family and friends. Um, today, I want us to think about um, that what took place on the cross at crucifixion was not a surprise to God. It surprised the disciples. Um, it probably surprised many of the, the Romans, even the centurion. It, it surprised the crowd. Um, they beat their breast in just agony as they watched the crucifixion of this man that they were enthralled by. And a week earlier, they were hailing as the Messiah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And now they're crying out, crucify him. It was a surprise to so many, but it was not a surprise to God. In Psalms chapter 4, verse 9, it, it was prophesied that the Messiah would be betrayed by a friend. In Zechariah 11, verse uh, 12, it was prophesied that he would be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. In both uh, Isaiah 53 and Psalms 22, there's a series of prophecies about the Messiah that would come. In Isaiah chapter 23 or 53, it tells us that uh, the Messiah uh, would be led to the slaughter like a, like a lamb. Uh, it says that he, he would be among the transgressors, the criminals. It prophesied that, that he would um, literally intercede on behalf of those that would, would, would persecute and kill him. In Psalms 22, uh, this messianic psalm, um, the psalmist says that they have pierced my hands and feet, that they uh, would, would beat me, but not a bone would be broken, and that they would divide my clothes among themselves. It was a surprise to everyone there, but it was not a surprise to God because it was a part of his divine plan. That at the cross, when everything looked like it was the worst, God was doing his best. That has great application for you and I. Because so many things that surprise you about what's going wrong in your world and life are not a surprise to God. They're not a surprise to him. And you and I have a choice to go um, in a way that's reactive to the things that don't go right, to a place that surrenders and relinquishes our own frustration in the midst of those times that are not going right, knowing that this is not a surprise to God. And if you and I are going through it, then God is committed to get us through it and to make us more like the one who suffered on our behalf. You see, Jesus became like us, so we would become like him. That happens maybe the most powerfully, not when everything is going right, but when everything goes wrong. I don't know what's going wrong in your world these days, but I know God's still on the job. And when you can't see what he's doing, it doesn't mean he's not doing something. In fact, maybe he's doing some of his best work in your most difficult time. So Lord Jesus, we surrender afresh today to the good work you want to do us in difficult times. Lord, like James, your brother, your half brother, we want to consider it pure joy whenever we face trials of many kinds. Because we know that the testing of our faith produces perseverance. And when perseverance finishes its work, we're gonna be more complete than ever. So Lord, do your work in us as we surrender afresh to who you are today, making us who you want us to be. In Jesus' name, have a wonderful day. Look through this lens to see when it's hard what God's doing that's good. I'll see you tomorrow.